Good morning. I'm sorry, I've been stretched. I have not been able to make a video because I have other people pulling on me constantly and it's a lot of work I have to do in the background. But anyway, uh, I'm setting myself free and I want to give some clarity and some understanding to new members, especially when they're onboarding into the Platinum Group, to understand my investment and trading philosophy. Um, number one, I use Coinbase Pro. That's my number one broker. They're the most secure and they act like a real exchange, a real fintech exchange with insurance and protection for their users as well as the best security you can get. And um, allows me to buy and sell directly to, to dollars, which is important. I, I don't go to Tether. Tether is garbage. Uh, it's uh, fake money that, uh, and as, as all these stable coins are, and um, I would not trust the Bitfinex people at all. Let me be very clear on that. Um, hence why I really don't like Binance and, and using exchanges that can, Asian exchanges have a high tendency to be uh, hacked and on and on. But Coinbase Pro is what I use. Now, unfortunately, as we see here, Cornex still does not support um, Coinbase Pro. And I want clarity from them as to when that's going to occur because that's important. Um, that was something that we said that we were going to offer and we should. So I want to see where we stand on that. Now, another thing is that my allocations, I'm always a net long in Bitcoin. I always have more long than I do short of period. That's number one. Um, and I generally try to keep it around 20%. It can go like an oscillator where I can be down to like only holding 10%. Um, uh, depending on the volatility of Bitcoin, it, you know, it scales up and down. But I generally try to keep it no less than 20% of my money in Bitcoin at any one time. Um, recently, when we went to the 13,000 range, it, that went all the way down to like 12 there. That was my, my low end. And I was selling up there and then I would buy back under um, 10,000. And, you know, you'll see in the charts some of the areas. But that's dollar cost averaging. And what that's allowed me to do over time is to have three times more Bitcoin than I would have had if I just held. Now, as well, it also allowed me to have three times more dollars because of that philosophy. And I'll go over more detail and you'll see that um, in the video coming um, that's just for the onboarding of the platinum. So anyway, here's our review for this week and have a great and day. Let's go over and take a look at Bitcoin and see what's going on. Um, as you can see, we are currently in this current little butterfly that's appearing right here. Now, two things can occur from here. Um, first, we have to see how it acts when it gets to the 10,700 range. This is 0.4 down here, if you remember. One, two, three, four, five. You know, we've got the completed pattern. And for it to go down here, and what, how it acts here is gonna be very important. Now, the market's extremely difficult, and the reason being is because the the charts look bizarre and it's mainly because of the whales or the bit um, bitfinex people whoever are have been pumping the, the market they've made it really disjointed and all over the place because it's artificial and when you get artificial pumps like this you get a lot of discombobulation and that just means nothing's going to make really much sense because it's up to the those people with their orders and their their pumps and it's it's just been so obvious what's what's occurred and uh, it's not necessarily good for the market um, but uh, let's not withstanding uh, get into that that let's go over and just take a look at what we can see on the charts uh, so right now we have this pattern and it's going to cycle more than likely and get down to this level here or down to here this is its support point that we see right here and if we get a complete breakdown where it really just tanks and gets under this point, then this is going to turn into a resistance point. So let's look at that as a future possible resistance. And we'll mark that as yellow because that's going to be a pivot point. And what would likely happen from there is that uh, prices will go under, break on down, go down, you know, and tank and then go back up to this point um, before consolidating and bouncing around within here. Uh, that's what's most likely to occur. 
Another thing that can occur is, let's take this away so we don't have to look at this. We already have that pretty much completing is something along the lines of this. Let's move this out of the way. Even though this is the most likely scenario of us going down, let's take a look at an alternative scenario that doesn't really work out for us. And let's see. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's like Boom, 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 boom. Something to the effects of this up here. You have to keep this in mind because this is also possible. This can stretch all the way up. I don't want to state what type of pattern it's going to be because the geometries here are disjointed and things usually repeat themselves. Everything's constricted. And that's basically because these uh, big whales or Bitfinex tether printers or whatever, they're running out of power. They're, they're losing their ability to push prices higher. So when we do turn, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by the, the magnitude of the down move because of the fact that they're expecting Bitcoin to go to 20 or 100,000 or some ridiculous numbers. They're not going to be expecting uh, a negative move down, um, which is very likely, unfortunately. Um, but uh, that, that's what we're currently, that's your secondary you know, perspective is we can get a move up like that. That stretches all the way above the um, 15 to 16,000 range. And then we target down here, and, but that's not occurred yet. There's also the possibility of this. Let's go over and give you different perspectives so you can see what can occur. And we're not here to predict the future. Uh, that's one thing. People have their ideas that the market's going to do this or that, and that's not the way things work. Let's also, let me show you a different. If this becomes the epoch point, remember I was telling you this line right here, it's very important because this is the other scenario right here. And there's kind of, it's very difficult because I can't predict what these Bitfinex guys are going to do. They're very they don't make life easy for you, but um, there's your other perspective right there. Nobody's paying attention to this. They're not looking at this as being something that can occur, which to their chagrin, uh, they might learn the hard way, you know, of what markets can do when they're in balance. And I, this is one of the things that, uh, it's um, unfortunate because when you have a group manipulating the market and they, they do this and so forth, they generally will hurt the market. They, they will, you can't have imbalances without um, getting uh, the inverse uh, reaction. Most of the time, every market that I've seen, when people have stepped in and manipulated, um, it's caused the imbalances to go back and revert and you get the big declines where they were pushing it up because it's kind of like empty. You get these empty zones where there's not real buying or selling. You know, it's not fundamentally driven. You know, not everybody's not getting involved. They're trying to push prices up on hype and they're filling in with their volume and trying to get people to buy into it like musical chairs. And they're trying to sit them down into these musical chairs and uh, take their supply and keep pressing prices up when they, they have the opportunities. But like I showed you, um, you got these blocks of selling that come in and they've been demonstrating it showing up ever since here. So when things do collapse and they go back down to these levels, which I would expect, um, don't be surprised. Don't be like, wow, why did this occur? Uh, this was uh, very possible to occur. So I showed you the two scenarios, the one going upwards, and then back down, and then this one right here, which I think this is the more likely one. If the tether guys have really run out and they're gonna be under you know, uh, duress now, um, they're probably gonna dump their BTC and take their profits and let things sink back down to the normal levels of where they were. 
which they started all of this all the way back here. So that's kind of like what I see in the market. And it's very possible when you have this type of manipulation, um, you, you're still under the old uh, crypto manipulation ranges, which basically means extreme moves up, extreme moves down, and the party goes on and on. So anyway, that's the update for this week. Um, I, I will have the uh, video out um, with you know the separate onboarding so people understand my investment philosophy. And I'll go through historically how I was able to achieve the results of growing my money as well as growing my Bitcoin. You know, uh, I had stupendous results, stupendous. And um, you know, uh, that's asymmetrical in nature. Sometimes we get slow points, like right now, very slow. You got this manipulation with the Bitfinex guys, really irritating, they messed up the charts. I want to curse, but I'll try not to, <laughs> um, with their manipulation. And it's very obvious. Uh, but anyway, I, I do want you guys to see the video. And we'll also get clarity on where the Coinbase is. And we'll have the short and long account in the near future. And we'll get things rolling in a, in a positive manner for everybody. Other than that, have a great day, a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later.